Approximately 88 years old, and I thought, no way, you know. But it's been 72 years since the war began, and um, my dad, if he he passed in 2004, but if he was still alive, he would be 88 years old uh, this year. So we salute you, and I want these two young ladies who sang. You did a beautiful job. Stand up, and I want you to look at. At Bill up here and these other men who have served in World War II and I want you to remember that this is these people that just stood and are sitting up here they've been called the greatest generation who ever lived and you have witnessed there aren't very many of them left and you have you've got to meet some of them today so you pass that on to your children when you are mommies 20 years from now. <laughs> I'm speaking as a grandfather. So anyway. Thank you very much. And you sang beautifully. You know, you know everybody's known uh, fellas like me, our story and where we were and what we did. But I, uh, I think it's highly appropriate that we meet here today and spend a few moments to remember the 2,400 odd people who gave their lives on that day. I wound up in a little town called Omanada, Japan. And that's where I left the service. I got aboard the Salt Lake City, an old well duck deck uh, destroyer. And the worst day I ever had at sea, and I never had a bad day was when we crossed the Columbia River bar and I was for sure that goddamn ship, that old tub was gonna capsize. <laughs> and I thought, man, ain't this a bitch, I'm gonna die on the last day of peace time at home. <laughs> and uh, it's funny now, but it sure wasn't funny then. I was positive that that ship was gonna capsize. In fact, it made headlines in the Oregonian, the newspaper in Portland. I still remember that I 